Leslie Hervey, interim clerk. Good afternoon. I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Ludo, County Administrator. Michael Free. Thank you all so much. Stephanie Sumro Dumas, President of the Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners. I would like to make a motion to excuse Vice President Reese. Second. Commissioner Sumro Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you so much. And we'll begin as we always do with silent prayer. And then after that, if you could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. We do not have any public comments. Um, okay. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the previous session. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you so much. We will move forward uh, with comments and motions from the commissioners. I'll start out. So on Sunday, I went to Anderson Hills. Um, is that a ch church? United Methodist Church, and it was for an Eagle Scout ceremony. Um, Eric Beck, our engineer, invited me there because there were uh, eight graduates. And uh, it's just strange to me that you work with people and you really don't know a lot about them. We're so busy uh, with the day to day. And then to see um, Mr. Beck there, he's a scout master. And uh, his son was actually uh, graduating into an Eagle Scout. Um, position. And so it was just awesome. I just want to publicly thank you um, for making me feel so welcome and being a part of it. And I took a proclamation from the board to recognize that day. So it was an awesome time for me. And on a Sunday, everybody kept saying, you're taking your Sunday, but that's what we're here for. So it was a, a nice, beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, and then on Tuesday, I went to Loth Street for a ribbon cutting uh, in Mount Auburn uh, for some new townhomes. Lots of partnerships. The port was a major uh, partner on this. I'm sure Commissioner Driehaus will talk a, a little bit about it. She also was there. But uh, just to continue to see affordable housing uh, being done, just less than a week before that, I was in Lincoln Heights. We both were uh, for a ribbon cutting for more affordable housing. So that's what we're talking about. We want more of it. Um, and then on Thursdays, every Thursday, I sit in on a White House briefing um, to discuss, well, what's really going on um, with the administration. Nothing major. Um, still talking about, of course, Ukraine and Russia. Um, and that's the focus. And you guys are hearing uh, about that, too. But I'm able to hear it directly from the people that are in the White House. And that's all I have for my uh, comments. So, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, yes, I was going to mention the Loth Street townhomes. Mm -hmm. um, it was a wonderful ribbon cutting. And what struck me was that the model that they're establishing out there, it's a partnership, as you say, with the community and the port and other partners, is to build homes at market rate and, and when they sell those homes, then they can subsidize homes that are affordable housing in the same neighborhood on the same street, so that then we end up with um, mixed income housing uh, in our neighborhoods. And I said, you know, wh what a wonderful model, great place to start in Mount Auburn. Uh, the community is very supportive, so I was happy to join you um, at that event. It was very nice. Um, last night, I was up in Columbus for the CCAO, so that's the County Commissioner's Association of Ohio, um, a reception where legislators were invited to come and talk to county representatives from throughout the state. Um, I got some of our local delegation was there, um, so we got to talk about some of the pertinent issues um, here in Hamilton County. So that was um, good fun. It's always fun to hang out with the um, state representatives. And then this morning I went to a celebration over at the zoo. Um, this was a collaboration between the zoo and the health collaborative um, to thank and honor healthcare workers. Um, we all wanted to do something to thank the healthcare workers in our community. And um, one of the zoo board members, Kathy Crane, came to me and had this great idea that why don't we offer 
the um, healthcare workers a free day at the zoo and invite their families to attend at half price. So those days are today, tomorrow, and the next day, I believe it's a three-day event, um, and it is in recognition of their work and their service. It's also a national day where we're honoring healthcare workers, so that it, it fitted nicely. And there are a lot of tulips blooming at oh, the beautiful. zoo. This is a thing, right? Um, in April, the tulips bloom, and so it was just beautiful up there. And each of the hospital systems was represented by a hero f that was chosen from within that system to represent them. And so all these frontline you know, healthcare workers were there. And then, of course, um, Hamilton County Public Health and the city's public health right. um, departments were there as well. So it was, it was very nice. Um, I offered a resolution on behalf of the board um, to the Hamilton County health care worker. Um, her name is Rachel, and um, it, she was, you know, of course, grateful. And we are so grateful for um, what all the health care workers have done. I think we've said thank you throughout the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, but we just wanted to make a, a grand gesture to them and and so that, that was what we did this morning. Uh, and then lastly, Tom Carroll is leaving us. Uh, he's leaving Silverton. He's the city manager out there. He's been fantastic to work with. Um, very visionary um, and very uh, fun to deal with uh, as we move forward with all things Silverton. They have uh, grown leaps and bounds under his leadership and the leadership of the council and the mayor out there. Um, but he's leaving to go east to be near his daughter. Um, so I'm going to carry a proclamation out there today uh, in honor of his service. Um, so look for that. Um, but thank you to Tom Carroll for all that he's done, not only for Silverton, but really for Hamilton County. Okay. Thank you. Great. And I'm thinking about Tom leaving you. Yeah, He's awesome, and I know Mayor Smith was saying if you ever think about leaving, it's going to be a problem. So we yeah, we have to give exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, Jeff Aludo, our administrator. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, just a couple of comments, and then a couple of by leaves. Uh, just really quick on some comments. I know the board is aware that uh, through the Human Resources Department, we have invested in uh, staff training through NACO's High Performance Organization. Uh, program. We have a, 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 um, a tranche of employees in that, in that process right now. There's a couple of other um, slots that we'll be having employees in later on this year, but I was uh, informed by our facilities department that we have two of those employees, Rika Thacker and John Nestor, who currently have a perfect score as they're going through that. So we'll, we'll keep track of it, make sure it ends up that way, uh, but wanted to, to highlight them, congratulate them, and more to the point, just to bring uh, some uh, uh, visibility to the fact that we continue to do that uh, for county employees. Uh, secondly, also from a good news perspective, um, was made aware last week that the International uh, Parking and Mobility Institute has recertified its accreditation of our uh, parking operation. So Joe Feldkamp and his team, uh, they, have, they have an accredited parking operation through uh, the International Parking Mobility Institute that's, that looks at all sorts of things uh, from uh, safe, the safety of the operation, to the cleanliness of the operation, uh, to the staffing, the customer service procedures that are in effect, and they recertified uh, just this year that they are once again accredited. So congratulations to Joe and his team. That's great. Um, and then two by leave items uh, for you, commissioners. Let's see, I think the first one in your packet, and I want to just go in order here, uh, is uh, the resolution accepting the fact finders report uh, in State Employee Relations Board case, CERB case number 2021 MED 09-1130. This concerns um, the Sheriff's Office, the County Sheriff's Association representing the uh, Sheriff Enforcement Officers, Court Services Officers, Sheriff's Corporals, and related classifications. Uh, the board discussed this uh, the other day. The administration recommends approval of the fact-finding report. Thank you so much. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the report of the fact finder. Second. Commissioner Samara Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. And my final by leave is uh, a resolution approving the modification of section 4.9 of our personnel policy uh, to include one personal day uh, for those employees who volunteer to serve as a precinct election official. Um, this, as the board is aware, we've discussed pub uh, in, in prior sessions uh, the challenges that the Board of Election is having in terms of, of, of uh, obtaining a, an appropriate number of volunteers for poll workers and election and precinct election officials. Uh, the county currently um, supports that by offering uh, people a day off with pay 
uh, to uh, perform that role and that volunteer role. This would be uh, adding to that a little bit by telling folks if you volunteer, you also get a personal day uh, that you can use uh, before, before the end of the year as well. And we know um, from recent reports that the Board of Elections continues to struggle with, with volunteers. And we also know that given what happens at the state level, that there is even the prospect of another additional election uh, this year that would further strain their operations. So anything we as a county can do to continue to support what is a major function of county government, uh, we wanted to provide the, the board with the opportunity to do that. So the administration recommends approval. Uh, Frank Spataro is here if there are any uh, specific questions about the, the policy, uh, but happy to answer any other questions. Thank you. I think it's a great move that's, of course, very necessary. The Board of Elections was really frantic running around trying to find people at the, the last election. I don't have anything. Uh, Frank, did you have anything really you wanted to add? Uh, no, uh, you'll have to come up front if you want. Yeah. You didn't want. <laughs> Just real briefly, this is in addition to, they get their regular rate of pay for the day as well as a uh, sh small stipend from the Board of Elections to serve in that capacity. So we're hoping that that has the effect of getting some more people to, uh, to volunteer. Yeah, thank you for the clarity, appreciate it. Commissioner Greenhouse. Yeah, I, I wanna thank the administration for bringing this to us, uh, especially this year when we're likely to have two primary elections. Um, and I think many of us are very unhappy with how that has played out at the state level. It's gonna cost the state about $24 million to host that second primary, uh, and it's going to be much later in the year than it should be. And so I think it's with a great deal of frustration um, that I look to two primaries, and the Board of Elections is strained not only financially, and hopefully the um, state will pay for that second election. They should, they've caused the issue, and I think they should pay for it um, but there's also the issue of poll workers and so th thank you um, to, to the administration for uh, you know responding to what we know is going to be in real need um, coming to the, especially to the next primary the, the first will be challenging enough but that second one I think is going to be e doubly challenging and so we're offering an additional s incentive and and I was to I, I'll admit that I was unclear about this when we first saw it because you know we already give um, folks, employees that want to take the day to work at the polls, they get paid a paid day and they get that stipend from the BOE, as you said. And so now there's an additional incentive where you can take a personal day before the end of the year in addition to all of that, correct? Correct. Yeah, so I, I wasn't especially clear on this last week when I first saw it. Um, so again, I applaud you uh, for thinking this through, thinking that you know we, we need to do our part to continue to offer incentives for people to work on election day at the Board of Elections. We know they need the help, um, and especially this year with some of the chaos that we've got, I think it's especially timely. So thank yep. you. Well, we'll uh, work hard at publicizing this now that it's been approved, so hopefully we'll yeah. keep you apprised of how it's working. Thank mm -hmm. you. And my understanding, the state has already earmarked that uh, money that's needed for the second uh, primary, which may be in August is what I'm hearing. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, let me find it, it's back here. You need to pass the resolution. Hmm? Pass the resolution. I'm looking for it. Oh. oh, that's all, I know we have to pass it, yeah. It's in the, all the way in the back. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve the modification of, the, of Section 4.9 of the Personnel Policy Manual. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you. Let's move forward. And um, I wanted to say, Jeff, your team that's um, making, uh, writing up the weekly wrap that you send out primarily for all our staff to know what's going on. and. It is just awesome, so informative, so short, but to the point. And uh, I don't know who all is working on that, but you guys just do a great job. Thank you, Madam President. That, that is a joint effort of uh, uh, Ms. Bridget Doherty, mm -hmm. um, her uh, intern, who does a great job at helping out with that as well. Um, uh, uh, myself, um, other folks chime in from time to time with articles. We really like to pull articles in from the departments. Um, to make sure that this is something that is um, 
informative as possible. And I told Bridget when we started this effort that we wanted to try to be as wherever possible as wonky as we can. This isn't something that's going out to the public. This is more internal. And we want people to know, you know some of the nuts and bolts about what's going on in their fellow departments that they don't always get a chance to see. So uh, glad you're finding it informative. We'll, we'll keep uh, moving it forward. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some regular agenda items. Mr. Eric Beck, our engineer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I have three items for you today. Item number one is a resolution uh, authorizing an amendment to a consultant engineering agreement with Bearbacker for the Fields Erdl Road and Macaulay Road intersection project that's located in the city of Sharonville and Sycamore Township. This is project 501706. Uh, this resolution will authorize an additional $75,002 to perform right-of-way and utility work on the uh, engineering plans. Thank you. Pretty straightforward. So the $75,000 is from where? From the uh, permissive auto funds. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Drehouse. No I'd like to make a motion to adopt item one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Drehouse. Yes. Thank you. Item number two is a resolution author authorizing an engineering agreement with Prime AE Group for the improvements to Riddle Road Bridge, Wooster 0098, located in the village of Woodlawn. Um, this is uh, to do the perform the engineering design plans, uh, $198,704 coming out of the county engineer's permissive auto funds. Thank you so much. Any questions? I'd like to make a motion to adopt item number two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Drehouse? Yes. Thank you. And item number three is a resolution to authorize a joint agreement with Springfield Township for application and agreement with o for OPWC, the Ohio Public Works Commission, for funds for improvements to Galbraith Road from 789 Galbraith to the State Route 126 Ronald Reagan Highway on ramp. Total uh, estimated construction cost is $1,209,827. Of that, we got a 50% grant from the Ohio Public Works Commission for $579,724. Um, Springfield Township is paying $604,913. That leaves the county engineers paying $25,190 wow. out of permissive auto funds for this project. That's great. How were you able to, to leverage that? Um, it, it's a development being done, um, big medical office there at the, uh -huh. at the intersection of Galbraith and uh, Ronald Reagan. The township came to us. They need to do some roadway improvements, so we're leveraging the developer's funds, township funds, along with OPWC, and portion of our funds to get it done. Great. Commissioner Driehaus. Looks good. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve item number three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We will move forward. We have several consent agenda items. I'll just go through a few of them that kind of stuck out for me. Um, item number four, um, we actually, the consent agenda items are four through 20. And uh, one agreement is with the uh, board, County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Um, another item that we have in front of us is a replacement vehicle for the auditor's office. And there also is an award agreement on behalf of Paul Brown Stadium as it relates to parking with LBT Technologies. And there is also an agreement with Sycamore Township for Sheriff, uh, the Office of Sheriff Protective Services. And then we're also, uh, if we agree, accepting a purchase of our purchase orders through Hamilton County that they have every month. And then there is also agreement with the Hamilton County Mental Health and Recovery Board on behalf of the Sheriff Department uh, to reimburse uh, for mental health services. And um, also the same agreement or resolution between uh, Mental Health and Recovery Services and the Board of County Commissioners on behalf of the juvenile court system uh, for reimbursement of mental health services. Uh, in addition, we have three dump trucks uh, as replacements for the county engineer. And are, is that on a rotation? You have a list of. That's correct. We, we replace three vehicles per year. Per year. For a 20-year period. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. And then uh, job and family services, we have foster care and residential treatment we need to approve. And then there's a, a zone map amendment for uh, Pear Lane uh, townhomes. And that's about it. Um, any questions or comments on our consent items? Um, yeah, I had a couple um, questions. The first one is on item number four. It, it is uh, the levy proceeds going to DD services. Mm -hmm. um, it's $88 million, and it's, it's because it's got such a high price tag, Jeff, I was hoping you could just uh, walk us through that just a little bit, and um, especially for those that are not familiar uh, that might be watching. Yeah, so there, this is the agreement that we do um, with development, Developmental Disability Services as the uh, lead entity on the Developmental Disability Services property tax levy. So this is uh, a, the dollar amount associated with the uh, work plan for that levy. So we contract in, with uh, DDS uh, to provide them the authority to do that all that programming uh, uh, for the levy through DDS as an agency. It is a high dollar amount, but it, it corresponds directly with the property tax levy. Right. So, again, I just wanted to highlight that um, this is something that's paid for by the taxpayers uh, through property tax. We've got seven levies, and this is one of those seven. So it's very important, obviously, to the taxpayers that we do this work. So here, here we are um, m making sure that those dollars get spent and allocated. So I just wanted to highlight that one. Um, the only other thing was, um, and you mentioned it, Madam President, you know, we are often approving vehicles, uh, whether it's a truck or a car or, you know, whatever. And I'm wondering if we, as an administration, as a county, and I, I would need, um, obviously, support for this, start to look in a more green way at our uh, fleet and start to look at hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles um, as we start to think through our footprint, our carbon footprint, um, as a county. Um, I'm wondering if we need to start thinking about that. We, we've done other things like lead standard buildings, um, and, and, and I know uh, Ralph Linney is doing a lot with the facilities, but I think our fleet is another opportunity to do things differently as we move into the future and maybe in a more green way. So mm -hmm. I don't know if any of anyone's given that any thought, but uh, I'd be yeah, curious I to can. know if, we're, if so that's just possible. So briefly before uh, Engineer Beck, um, I can tell you that um, on an annual basis, we'll go out to bid for um, for vehicles through county procurement. Um, the purchasing office regularly um, puts as an alternative on uh, on every bid that goes out the alternative for a hybrid vehicle. So when departments go to purchase, whether it's a sedan, a truck, what have you, they have the option of, of purchasing a hybrid. Um, I've spoken with uh, purchasing director Jill Williams and as of this summer, we're gonna to start to include electric vehicles on that as an option. That's different from requiring departments to do it. So if there were um, board policy direction for board offices uh, to diversify their fleets, et cetera, by choosing electric or hybrid, uh, we could certainly uh, look at that. Um, but right now we do look at it. It's just on, it, we make sure that it is included in, as an option for, for uh, departments. I do know that um, environmental services has several hybrid vehicles. I'm not aware that there is um, that they're widespread through other departments at this point. And certainly, I don't know that there's any electric vehicles out there. So that's maybe something that require might um, could benefit from some board policy direction. So, but I'll defer to the county engineer on additional thoughts. Jeff, Jeff answered most of the questions. Um, the only thing, the three vehicles that we brought forward today are the big dump trucks, and currently those are not offered in a hybrid mm. or electric. So we continue to pursue that and continue to look at it. And Jeff, you're right. As far as I know, there's not any electric. Um, since the engineer's office does the maintenance on a lot of those vehicles for the outside departments, mm. right now we're only maintaining a few hybrid vehicles. So, you know, the long-term maintenance on them needs to be considered as well when we're purchasing them because currently we don't have staff in-house that have the knowledge for electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, we need to gear up for that as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that Eric is a, a forward thinker, so I'm sure he's already been thinking about that in OKI, where we both uh, attend. They're really looking into it, and there's a lack of charging stations right. around, and that's why they're kind of 
fast forward also trying to get these charging stations out but i absolutely agree we need to be right. looking at that and have it as a policy so well let me let me just ask the engineer since you're here um so if we were to move forward um and not super aggressively i mean i don't want to put any mm -hmm. anybody you know behind the eight ball but uh if we were to start to move in this direction because we gradually buy these vehicles i mean it's not like we're doing 20 at a time Correct. It's, it's more of a replacement cycle that, that, right. is what it so is yes i wonder if um you know, if we were to have policy direction towards either hybrid or eventually electric, as that becomes more commonplace, what? Tell me what you would need to do, and because you are uniquely positioned in the county because you do the maintenance on these cars. Um, so I'd be curious to know what what your thoughts are around that uh, us doing something like that. Well, the first thing is is charging stations. We would need you know to have 24-hour access to charging stations. For a lot of our emergency response vehicles um, that would be the biggest thing and we would need to have internal mechanics that are trained to service electric vehicles i think is going to be the key thing that, you know so talk to me a little bit about hybrids then as opposed to electric straight out electric hybrids have still have a gasoline engine in them so we can service that portion of it we can't ser currently service the battery portion the electric portion those go we still have to send those to the dealers to get those maintained Okay, thank you. Thank you, thanks so much. Um, any further discussion, okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve items four through 20. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse. Yes. Um, with no further comments coming forward, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you.